Ho, 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 huge movie fanatic Nate coming at you, continuing my reviews of the Silent Night, Deadly Night sequels. Coming at you this time to review Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, The Initiation, and If I Die Before I Wake. Thank you. This just like part, well, pretty much all the covers for the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies, I think, has an absolutely fantastic cover by um, now they added an L to their IVE now live home video um, is basically putting out um, another Silent Night Deadly Night sequel part four the initiation and you know like I say the cover I think is absolutely fantastic maybe not so much the back cover this is a little less inspired I think but uh, there's one side of the spine, there's another. But basically there's no, from what I can remember, there's no Rambo knife in the movie. They just, art department just took some liberties, I guess, on that one. But I like the cover. And as I mentioned in my review of uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, Lionsgate at somewhere along the line within the last several years put out this um, DVD 3-pack, which features um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, 4, and 5, which is, you know, must-own for, you know, people like me who love um, basically Christmas horror movies, even though the movies themselves probably aren't really necessarily that great. Um, this is probably the best way to own Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, 4, and 5 until outfits like maybe, who knows, maybe after, maybe if the their Scream Factory's Blu-ray of Silent Night, Deadly Night does well. I was, as I said, I think in my review of the second movie, maybe Scream Factory would do some of the sequels. Maybe they do a Blu-ray part two and maybe three, four, and five. Who the hell knows? But uh, at any rate, uh, <clears throat> Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, The Initiation, is the first sequel to not have anything to do with any of the previous movies, completely dropping the, you know, Billy slash Ricky Codwell or Cadwell, whatever the hell their last name is, storyline which is probably for the best at this point they probably should have done it after the second one to be honest but whatever this movie takes along more along the premise of what kind of John Carpenter was said to have wanted to do with Halloween sequels where every you know Halloween sequel would just be a, its own story taking time um, around the holiday taking place around the holiday of Halloween uh, that's kind of what the you know Silent Night, Deadly Night four and five do. Basically, they have their own little story that just revolves around Christmas. One could argue that this movie was originally just shot as something completely different and just you know slapped on uh, the title Silent Night, Deadly Night four at the very last minute. I mean, it, that could very well be the case. I don't know. I'm not privy to all the details surrounding the production of this movie. But um, this movie, incidentally, was made, um, directed by Brian Usna, who had, I think at this time either had just done or either will just do um, Bride of Reanimator, and it's scored by Richard Band, of course, um, Charlie Band's brother, who was, you know, doing all kinds of Full Moon movies, and not only Full Moon movies, but Bride of Reanimator and stuff at the time. You know, this movie has a very um, early 90s Richard Band feel. As a matter of fact, I mean, so many of the music that so much of the music Richard Band did in the early 90s could all just be, you know, from what I, for all I know, the same stuff just recycled over and over because, with the exception of the opening um, credit music, I think is pretty great in this movie. And the opening credits um, themselves are really kind of cool in this movie. But I mean, just the music that takes place during the movie, just all of the Richard Band familiar just music during the movie itself. It could just be stuff that's recycled from, you know, all other scores, who the hell knows. But uh, if this stuff is stuff, you know, that was all made for this movie, I mean, it sounds exactly like so much of the other Richard Band stuff he's done, with the exception of, like I say, the, the main opening title music is really cool. And it should be said that just like, um, well, Brian Usna had done, I think, I think he did this movie, which I mentioned before, and I'll probably do a review of someday, probably not this year, but this movie by the name of Society, which I think is a pretty good movie, creepy premise. And I think he did that before he did Bride of Reanimator, and, and there's this, you know, I think Screaming Mad George had a hand in the effects in, of Society, which is, incidentally has since come out on Arrow Video, Blu-ray, I think. 
And I think Screaming Mad George, as well as other people, had a hand in the gore effects of Bride and Reanimator. So, like I say, this is right around the time of Bride and Reanimator. So, so many people that he's worked on in the past are actually, you know, a part of this movie. Uh, the crew, if you will, or the people behind the scenes. Um, first off the bat, reviewing this movie, I mean, this movie features an absolutely drop-dead gorgeous knockout of a just babe, if you will in the lead part. This girl, I can't believe she didn't become just like a huge, huge star. Not that that's something to really want to aspire to be. Um, but this woman, or this girl in this movie, is, is positive, well you could call her a woman, is positively drop-dead gorgeous. Like such an amazing like face, like from the 20s. She's got this great 20s or 30s era look to her. It's absolutely drop dead crazy sexy face is probably the you know the really the only reason to really watch this movie that should be said that this movie also features um you know ron howard's brother clint howard in a role that he so often uh is found doing this kind of just homely just psychopath guy in this movie this movie also features maude adams who had been a bond girl i think she'd been a bond girl twice uh Put, if memory serves, but Maude Adams with the amazing cheekbones, which almost look like cheek implants or whatever, but I probably aren't, whatever, um, is is a big, you know, is a kind of a key role or key part in this movie. So, I mean, it's got a lot of people that, you know, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and even a bit part, bit couple bit appearance parts by uh, Reggie Bannister as the, I think the, the kind of the guy who works at the newspaper is like the head honcho boss guy at the uh, you know at the newspaper. I think he's got like two or three really quick bit walk-on parts, which I'm sure will just all done in one day. So this movie features some familiar faces, um, you know, both in behind and in front of the camera. But unfortunately, with all of that, you know, familiar faces and stuff like that, I mean, it's in my opinion, this movie is really not that interesting it's i mean i guess it's it's hard to come from a movie you know when you've had a movie the, the last three movies were basically about a, one family or a group of brothers if you will and then to have part four just be just a completely different story is just something that's not particularly easy to adjust to this movie is basically just a mystery and as i said i mean who knows it was probably just called the initiation even though obviously there'd already been a movie called that in the 80s which i've reviewed the movie in the blu-ray of who knows maybe this was some movie other movie the horror movie or whatever um i, I looked a little bit of it online and from what i can gather this movie was potentially called bugs in the uk and who knows maybe this movie was originally just made as bugs because it features a lot of icky bugs some real and some fake like screaming mad george creations presumably and stuff like that but it as i was saying it's difficult to go from you know three movies having been about santa claus killer if you will to just you know a movie about basically um but this movie is kind of like a feminist you know kind of cult 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 feminist dream come true horror movie come true where it's about this Probably, it's very like much like Rosemary's Baby, basically. It's, it's Silent Night, Deadly Night meets Rosemary's Baby, which is basically about just this cult group of cult women, these witches or something like that, who basically, I don't even know what the basic, you know, what, what Maud Adams basically, as we, you know, come to find out during the, it's a mystery kind of movie, so as we come to find out towards the middle slash end of this movie, Maud Adams is kind of the lead witch or whatever in this kind of cult of older, well, they're not all old, but whatever. There's some young girls associated with this. But at the very beginning of the movie, we come to find out this, you know, this girl who, you know, was like basically burned alive from like, you know, lower half of her body came out, you know, burst into flames and she fell off the top of this building and just, you know, the bottom half of her body just burned to a cinder on the pavement. That's kind of how the movie begins. We the rest of the movie is basically the sexy ass reporter chick who well she's not a reporter she works at the newspaper and she just does like classified ads or whatever but she's sleeping with this one other guy who at the paper who um, I don't know if she's sleeping with this guy to try to get further in the company or whatever but she she's interested in the story and kind of just I don't know she just kind of wants to basically pretend to be a reporter and she she just thinks that this particular story of this person you know bursting into flames and falling off a building is gonna 
help her career maybe as a reporter and get more notoriety or something like that. So she kind of, this is a kind of another potentially feminist point in this movie where it's just kind of like this woman's just going to take charge and even if she's not offered the assignment, she's just going to take it upon herself to kind of pretend to say she's a reporter and go around and start asking questions and stuff and that's where Maud Adams comes into the play, obviously. I think she <clears throat> works in a bookstore right, you know, just yards away from where this woman fell to her death on the frickin' pavement or whatever, so obviously it's like, you know, the people who live and operate in that building were pretty much responsible for it. At, 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 the, at the end of the day, what ends up happening is this girl who fell to her death was actually Maude Adams' freaking daughter. I don't know, like I say, I, I don't know if I'm just dense, I don't, I don't know exactly what they were trying to achieve, but at the end of the day, I mean, Maude Adams' daughter, she said like, oh, she wasn't strong enough, she couldn't do it or whatever. So basically, throughout the course of this movie, this really hot, sexy, young reporter chick, or chick who wants to be a reporter, um, it just gets deeper and deeper into this kind of feminist cult thing, if you will, or group of witches or whatever, this coven or whatever, and, um, it's just basically, the, you know, Maude Adams just slowly, methodically is trying to, you know, use her to do the same thing that he tried to, she tried to use to her daughter to do, which I'm still not clear exactly what she wanted to accomplish with her daughter, and, you know, consequently I don't know what she is trying to accomplish with, um, this new sexy chick who wants to be a reporter, but, it's it's just a kind of a not particularly interesting story in my opinion that just happens to take place around Christmas. That's the only way that you know they they really weave the uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night in you know into this movie. Is it just takes place around Christmas? That's why I think that this movie probably wasn't originally Silent Night, Deadly Night. Maybe it was you know, made as to be called bugs or something like that, or just nasty or, you know, something other than that, and then they're just like, you know what, it takes place around Christmas, let's call it Silent Night, Deadly Night 4. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. So like I say, I don't know what at the end of the day Maude Adams is trying to accomplish with, you know, having sacrificed her daughter, obviously she said she wasn't strong enough. Now she's got this new sexy chick to do the same thing and then she not only wants her but then she wants her to kidnap her boyfriend's younger brother which is probably like Brian Usna's son or something like that I think maybe potentially something like that um, so at the end of the movie this you get this sexy reporter a girl who wants to be a reporter to kidnap um, basically the guy she's sleeping with at the newspaper his younger brother kidnap him to be like a virgin sacrifice offering and probably doesn't help or doesn't hurt the fact that he's a he's a nasty male you know the feminist witch cult of witches or whatever that's portrayed in this movie like I say I don't know what they're trying to at least in Rosemary's Baby you knew what they were trying to do you know make like a freaking physical devil or whatever I don't think it's really ever mentioned what the actual goal of this kind of coven or cult of feminist witches in this movie is. Um, if it's mentioned, I just completely went over my head because I was just so disgusted by the bugs and stuff like that in the movie. There's a lot of gross bug stuff. Some of them are real, like cockroaches, and some of them are just like huge Screaming Mad George cockroaches. Probably the same ones used in Nightmare on Elm Street 4 or whatever. But this movie is basically uninteresting. It's just a movie that it's, it's one of these kind of plots that it looked like it was a story written for just an episode of a you know whatever an hour long episode of a TV show kind of thing that was just stretched into feature length. It just like seems like one of these things that's just you know half of you know it was supposed to only fill like a 45 minute slot you know with commercials to make it an hour and they, they extended it into a more of a feature length it really really just drags and drags and drags the only good thing about it is just seeing you know Reggie Bannister briefly appear every now and then and, and just see you know if you're if you're a fan of female beauty I mean the best thing about this movie is this girl and she, she, you know, she's not only just gorgeous as all hell, but she does a fantastic performance in this movie as she's, you know, delves all, you know, ever deeper into this, you know, this strange, you know, whatever, just surreal um, world of whatever, feminist cult women, feminist witches, if you will. I mean, you could just call the movie that, you know, feminine witch, witches or feminist witches or something like that. Um, you know, and I guess the movie does a pretty good job at um, just 
doing that thing that Rosemary's Baby did. I mean, it doesn't do nearly as good a job as Rosemary's Baby, but you know how it's a slow progression into, you know, insanity or madness or whatever. And then we come to find out a little on later towards the end of the movie that this, you know, her co-worker at the newspaper is in on it too. So that's kind of creepy and it reminds you of Rosemary's Baby. And just like almost everyone that she knows is in on it, except for, I don't think, um, the boyfriend. I can't remember if the boyfriend, you know, the guy she's sleeping with dies. I can't even remember what happens to him. But, uh, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, it's just a very slow crawl. And you know how these movies that just have this mystery thing and it's this really small, or really slow crawl to reveal more bits and pieces and, and this and that. I mean, I didn't find it particularly interesting. And in my opinion, this is the least interesting of the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies. And as I said, I mean, it probably wasn't even originally, you know, uh, who knows, but it, it, this this is the least interesting of the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies for me. Even with a in ridiculously, incredibly sexy, you know, lead girl, um, I'm only going to be able to give this movie one half star out of four stars. So just to be clear, that's a half of a star. It's not one and a half. It's a half of a star out of four stars. It's even with all the, you know, people behind it, Brian Usna, Richard Band, Screaming Mad George. I mean, there are some kind of cool Screaming Mad George effects with, you know, her fingers getting all goofy and intertwined and stuff like that. But it doesn't make this movie easier to sit through or anything like that. It's, I mean, I guess it's, you know, if, if this is your kind of thing where it's just like a mystery about, you know, Rosemary's Baby or Witch Coven or something like that. If that's your thing, you might enjoy this movie, but I didn't find it particularly enjoyable. So I guess that pretty much does it for my review of Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, The Initiation. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next time.